I like to teach landscape quilting and I thought it would be a nice thing to make this video for my students to watch before they take my landscape quilting class because they can start the wheels turning with thinking about colors and what kind of fabrics you might want to use and what kind of designs you might want to try. I get my inspiration from fine artists like Claude Monet and Louise Comfort Tiffany, uh, but I also learned a lot from my first uh, quilting teachers like Gloria Lofman and Betty Busby taught me a lot about how to create wonderful fantasy-like landscapes. This piece was inspired by the painter Rousseau. I love his foliage and uh, it's so out of proportion. So the leaves are very, very big. The grass is very tall. And I like the idea of not trying to reproduce exact realism, but to create kind of a, a, a landscape that has elements which really pop, which jump out at you. I think you can choose background fabrics for your, your hills and water and rocks that are uh, evocative. I like to use hand dyed fabrics that really are interesting and have a, a real modeled color that makes you think of, uh, it's kind of mysterious. Trees are a huge part of my landscapes and I like to find interesting background fabrics with uh, trees in the foreground and then you're looking through the trees at these interesting colors of background fabrics. Lisa Reber of Dippy Dyes is my source for a lot of my background fabrics as you see here. They just make me think of water or they make me think of being in the woods with dappled sunlight. Vicki Welsh of colorwaysbyvicki.com is another source for beautiful gradient fabrics. In these, I just picked one gradient fabric for the background and then I used ink tense pencils to create the horizon of the hills. And this is a autumn scene. And here is the same scene using a different gradient. The foreground is darker, the midground is bright, and then uh, the, the sky is a little bit darker as you go up toward the top. A color wheel is a great tool to use in choosing fabrics. Some good ideas are to pick colors that are complementary, meaning they are directly across from each other on the color wheel, or you can use an analogous color scheme, which means they are side by side. It might just be two colors that are beside each other, or a whole collection of three, four, five colors that are beside each other. I tend to use that scheme an awful lot. In this example, you see the use of blue and orange, which are across from each other on the color wheel. And I also like the stripe batik that you see here for, this, for the uh, ocean. And in this one, again, blue and orange across from each other on the color wheel. And at the very bottom, you see that striped batik. It's called patina hand paints, and they're great for landscapes. Here you see an analogous color scheme with colors that are side by side, the violet and the green and the blue. This quilt was made for the Advent season and was uh, inspired by the little quote, a child will lead them. And this quilt was created to encourage the healthcare workers at Hershey Medical Center during the pandemic. It's a very simple landscape, also in the analogous color scheme, and just shows someone facing their shift and it's imposed upon a landscape. I like to make nighttime landscapes as well. 
Uh, these all use the blue and gold, or some of this gold is leaning a little more toward yellow, but that's a great color combination. You're also going to notice that some of my landscapes are extremely simple. I use very few elements, and I really think that sometimes simplicity is more powerful than a lot of complexity. Some of my landscapes are abstract landscapes, as in this case. It is a very abstract work, but you can still see the implication of a landscape. In the work. And here's another example. I used a uh, landscape for the background of these windows from my window series. So this is kind of a hybrid between an abstract work and a landscape. Here's a simple little gradient that I used and I drew the design with ink tense pencils and then bordered it with an over dyed uh, print. And then this one is another Vicki Welsh gradient fabric and I just stitched the foliage to the surface and the rising sun. It's called Marsh Sunrise. So in the landscape classes that I teach, I welcome the beginner landscape quilter and you can use a line drawing of something like this quilt or the next quilt that you see coming up. Uh, but I will be teaching you just some basic skills in creating a landscape quilt and you can make it as absolutely simple or complicated as you like. So more advanced quilters are certainly welcome and will enjoy the class as well. Another video that I recommend that you watch is called Limited Color Quilts and that will give you some more ideas for using values in your landscape quilts. You can check out the links below to the quilters that I mentioned and also to the link for the classes on my website. So see you in class.